And uh, tell me, mate, did you shed a tear at all? Look, it wasn't until I uh, come home that night. I went. To, I was fortunate enough to go to the grand final dinner. During that last quarter, I, I can't remember anything that last quarter. It's just a. Uh, just the blur, I mean, the excitement of it all was just, uh, it was exciting stuff. I mean, 10 minute mark, 20 minutes to go and you won a premiership. Wow, you know, you just, you dream of that. That's what you go to bed at night and dream about, that your team, you know, midway through the final quarters won the premiership. Um, it wasn't until I got home that night and, uh, you know, unpacked the bags and uh, you, you sat down and you sort of, you become a bit teary eyed thinking, this was just fantastic. Yeah, and I think it's different for us too because we cop so much. As the Collingwood supporter, we cop so much. I mean, you go out there in the streets and you're hunted. You become a hunted. They look for you after a loss, and if you get lost in the finals, they look for you. But this was our day. They weren't looking for us on grand final night, and they won't be looking for us now until uh, the beginning of the next football season. We walk down the streets now and they're nowhere to be found. It's like there are little rats under the floorboards. Where are the haters gone? Oh, oh, under the floorboards, like rats under the floorboards. They scurry. It's like a charming effect. That's right, you know, it's that five hundred dollar electricity bill sitting on the table at home isn't as bad as what it was when you walk in here. That's right. I know what it's like. Yeah, state of Zen, you know, state of Zen. Yeah, yeah. Our kids are like, like it's coming over there. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so let's move away from the yes. grand final, mate. So now, um, after all the exposure and the time at the cinemas, did it really exceed your expectation, or was there room for more uh, uh, like money to be made, profit to be had? Look, we um, five percent of all movies get to the cinema. Okay, very limited amount of movies make it to the cinemas. We were very lucky to get it to the cinema on a strictly released limited basis. That's all it was. We went to the cinemas on a strictly limited basis thing. It was there for two, three weeks, and we knew that. There was no promises of uh, millions of dollars in Hollywood. This movie is a very good movie, and it's a funny movie. It's not the best Australian movie ever made. We're not gonna, we haven't set ourselves up to be shot down. And as you said, it was uh, no avatar as well, Josh. No, we did everything ourselves. We, uh, because when the guys had uh, put the film together, money had run out. Uh, I think uh, just a ten over 200 grand they spent on the whole thing, which is quite amazing. He promised me, two years ago outside of, outside of Cafe in Cobra, he promised me a million bucks in the world if we did this movie. He knew we had your partners in crime. And he promised me the same thing. And premiere night, and look at this, this is my wallet. 50,000 dollars is all I've got in my wallet. Two years of hard work, premiere night. That, and this man here, Christopher Tissa, him, him promised me everything. We wouldn't see the movie, it's quite amazing. Uh, no guarantees, uh, we've run out of money, so we had, to, we had to do the promotion ourselves. There was a lot of hard work, a lot of hard work. The movie itself was hard work. The work at the ending of the movie and to get it where we got it was even harder. It comes out on national release on DVD on the 2nd of December. So we hope to get a bit of coin back from DVD. We think uh, Madman Enterprise is one of the biggest DVD distributors in Australia are backing it. Uh, the people of Madman love it. They think it's going to be something pretty special. It's a very, very funny movie. It's a great storyline. And, uh, and the whole times I went there to see it with cinemas full of people, uh, laughter was, uh, was heard most of the night in, in those three viewings. Yeah, look, uh, I was there, mate, and uh, the amount of laughs that you got, I was, I was yeah. very impressed with that. And I think you should all go grab a copy. Seriously, it's a fun movie. And uh, you know it's it's our favourite it's our favourite fan and uh, yeah he's, he's just going wild in the cinemas at the moment and hopefully there's another opportunity for maybe a sequel <laughs> as well you never know. Yeah. Now, uh, Adam, this is uh, this was a, a poster put together by uh, 
Alan Purvis, a cartoonist in South Melbourne, and he did all his free of charge, the gold jacket, the Premier's Game Over, and uh, all the proceeds from these large uh, posters and the smaller versions all went to the Epilepsy Foundation of Victoria. So congratulations to Al and um, his mob out there in South Melbourne. Um, this is the gold jacket. This is on eBay at the moment. Uh, this is the jacket that will be sold tonight, so we won't see this again. I think already on eBay it's over three grand. Because look, it's been around for 10 years, and what a good way to finish it on a premiership. Yep. And there's the famous uh, Herald Sun Premiership 2001. 2010? Oh, sorry, 2010. <laughs> sorry. Now, there's the famous Carl Wooden Spoon of 2002. Oh, I didn't say that. Yes, 2002. And, um, that was given to me by somebody after the game, so I kept it and I've loved it. That's my personal memento of the Carlton Football Club. Now, over here, look at this here. Now, get this in to Joffa Gay Pies, Nelson Buckley. Oh, yes, the great man. Yeah, the great man. So that's been covered up and uh, there's a plaque there near acknowledging Buck. So that's, going to, that's a, a nice collector's album. I've kept it covered. Beautiful. It's very, very hard to say this, but um, so, there was, <laughs> I've heard some Oh, like, skeletons in the cupboard. Don't you hate skeletons <laughs> in the cupboard? I've heard that uh, because you were too rowdy at the footy, yes. Eddie McGuire decided to put you as kind of head of the cheese squad. Is that true? No, it's, well, look, I don't know. I don't know what the interpretations people like to use, but we were with the outer cheer squad. I think it was in uh, Eddie's second term of presidency. He saw the outer cheer squad and we were getting kicked out. We would never... Uh, and I'm embarrassed to say this because I've changed since then, Adam. Yeah. I've changed, okay? So don't, uh, we would never see a game finish. We would either be taken out, escorted out, told to go home, all that sort of horrible mm -hmm. stuff. But Eddie, um, Eddie wanted all his other cheer squads to come to give the one cheer squad, and that happened, and it was time to, uh, well, it was time for all of us to pull our heads in, Adam. We were just, look, we are just, over the top, rowdy, but it's hard to sit amongst opposition supporters, isn't it? It's yes. hard to sit back and hear someone putting your club down and players down. So what I'm saying is that in the cheer squad, and I imagine in the in the in the wider area of the safety of the Ponsford stand, we don't get that anymore no. because we're all surrounded by kind of people. But it's it's horrible of sitting with others. I'm sounding repetitive here. But we had that back in the old days of the uh, the unofficial cheer squad, and I couldn't handle it. And yeah. uh, it's it's great for me to be in the cheer squad. It's, it's a lot of fun down here. Right. Well, that was uh, Joff McCorf there. Uh, thank you very much, Liam. Yes. Thank you. Here's the man. Watch his YouTube tricks. They're hilarious. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs>